Hello everyone, this is Lynn with Psychic Focus at psychicfocus.blogspot.com and today's post I titled From a Land Far, Far Away. So we have a lot of interesting topics here that are unearthly topics. So I'll go ahead and get started. First one says, Hi Lynn, can you tell us about Centimani Stone? And this was a new one that I had never heard of before. I've heard, and what they go on to tell me is, I've heard it's from the Star System Sirius and helpful during Ascension. I also heard it is a black magic stone. Thank you for checking this out. And this was really cool. And when I pulled it up, I really wasn't sure what I was going to see as far as a picture. I did want to look at a picture of it and tune into it while I looked at that. And what I got was that it did come here via a comet that landed here on Earth. And it looks like when it came into our atmosphere, it was in liquid form. It was almost like I saw this glob coming into our atmosphere. And when it crashed into... It looks like something sandy. I don't. I couldn't tell if it was a desert or a beach. Uh, it bonded with the liquid and it cooled and created this stone. It was like they had this blob of stuff and it smashed into this sandy environment. And when it did that, it solidified and it created this type of unique stone. And I get that if you were to test it, you'd see a lot of unique properties to it because of the way that it was formed. It was just not like was not like any other stone and when I focused on its origin I couldn't confirm it was serious but I am drawn to Orion's belt and it looks as though it came from a system within that constellation and when I looked at it some more because I, I wanted to get a little more clarity on it it had similar vibrational properties to crystals and it also works in a similar way it has to do with the intent that you put into it to determine the effect that you're going to get. For example, if you uh, wish to do things in the greater good, that's the intent that will be amplified from this stone. And likewise, if you are trying to practice dark magic or black magic or any of that type of stuff, anything occult, anything dark, anything uh, ill will intended, you're going to get just that. You don't know how it's going to manifest, but I do get it has to do with what your intentions are will determine what you get out of it. So it's very much like a crystal in regard to that. Uh, I, I couldn't see it making you ascend, but I did see that it can increase your vibration and help aid you in the ascension process if that's what you're intending to do and you're doing it in the greater good. So really intention is everything with regard to this specific stone. Okay, so next question it says, hello, Lynn. Supposedly, several flashes of light, perhaps even laser beams, were seen emanating from Saturn on September 11th. Is this a legitimate video or is it CGI? If it is real, what are the light beams and what are the two colors? Why are there two colors, red and blue? With Saturn celebrating a planetary holiday and broadcasting their colors? Thanks for the blog. And I put a link on my original blog post. If you want to go in and look at this video, um, you can actually see what looks like a laser beam of red and a laser beam of blue being shot out. And so what this person requesting the question wants to know is what was this all about? And I did get it that it was legit, but I see it being from a totally different cause. There's ET bases all over the solar system and Saturn has a base and it looks underground because the atmosphere is hostile. And the base looks like a temporary home to some very tall, dark-skinned grays because I wanted to know who it was and who was there. And these beams were really frequency beacons that were being sent out in our eyes with our 3D biological eyes here or human eyes converted that frequency to color. And the frequency feels like some kind of binary communication and the two pulses came through being red and blue. So basically, they were emanating these frequency pulses out, and in the process of doing so, when we captured them and we viewed them, what was a frequency was interpreted by us as having a color associated to it. Okay, next question. Our asteroid belt. Why is it there? What happened? And what did it used to be? So, I get that there was a collision uh, with the Earth on the Pacific Ocean side. And it looks like it happened when the moon was being brought here. And at the time of the collision, Earth exploded and the shrapnel from the Earth flew into the atmosphere and created the asteroid belt. 
And that is why our Pacific Ocean is so large. Like if you look, whether you're looking at a flat map, flat Earth map, or whether you're looking at a normal, you know, spherical map, it doesn't matter. Our Pacific Ocean base of water is huge. And I get that it had to do with this collision that occurred in that portion of the Earth. And also you'll note that the land masses are really close together. So I get it was all tied to that event and that happening. Okay, so the last question. Hi, Lynn, can you individually look at a list of 10 Earth-like planets and see if there's alien life, ranging from microbial to advanced humanoid alien or non-humanoid alien on these different planets? Also, which one of these 10 is most suitable for humans to settle on in the future? Here's a list of the 10 and a bonus one. Thanks very much. And here's a YouTube that talks about the Earth-like planets. And again, I would encourage you to go to my actual blog, the psychicfocus.blogspot.com uh, and look at the YouTube video and then also in a previous question I had a link to more information as well. It just kind of maybe completes the puzzle if you are curious about these topics and you want to learn any more. So rather than go through each individual one, um, I had a few really stand out to me. Uh, Kepler 62E, I did actually see a humanoid looking being there and they look like little miniature humans. They have light colored pinkish skin, they had light hair, dark eyes, and their eyes were so dark I didn't even see any white in their eye. I could just see like these dark eyes. Two arms, two legs, webbed fingers, and a big adult sized feet. So if you can imagine that. And they look to be the most similar to humans in this area, this planet looked to be the most habitable to humans too. So again, that was Kepler 62E. Um, a few other ones that jumped out was Kepler 69C. I could see some humanoids, but they're not advanced. They had really fleshy skin, but they walk on two legs and they had two arms. I couldn't get a lot of detail on them though. And what else really stood out to me? Um, Kepler 22b had some microbial life. A lot of them, I just, I couldn't see life and I couldn't connect to them. But it seems as though the Kepler 62e was very, very dominant and in my face. And actually, now that I look at it, I think that's about a wrap for today. And that's all I have. So again, I want to thank you for listening. Please feel free to leave a comment, like it, share it, subscribe. Uh, all those things help me out a lot. I really appreciate all all of you and all of your all of our community. I love it. So I'm thankful to have it. And again, this is Lynn with Psychic Focus at psychicfocus.blogspot.com. Thanks. Bye.